Welcome to OSD, I'm Scott, and today we're taking a look at the Transformers Generations Combiner Wars Skydive. So the Aerial Bots were always one of my favourite G1 teams of Autobots, and Skydive was always one of the coolest out of them as far as I was concerned. So it is awesome to see a new version of him for the 21st century, and he's looking pretty good. Now here he is on card, you can see a nice big bubble, you can see him very clearly in there, lots of detail, easily viewed and of course lots of other details on the card itself. So we have the whole combined to form logo here. Uh, just letting us know that you can use him to form your Superion or whatever other version you choose to make. Uh, big old Combiner Wars picture there of Superion letting you know that he is part two of five to form Superion. Uh, Product shot there on top of his name, but he know that he comes with a card. He's for ages eight and up. Uh, we do of course have the Transformers logo in red and black. And he is part of the Generations line, the Combiner Wars line, and some gorgeous new artwork. Very much in the style of the Transformers Legends game. Which I believe we actually see that artwork on the collect card that he comes with. So it's not the same artwork, but uh, very much in that same sort of vein, and it looks really, really cool. So, back of the card, we have again a couple of product shots. Very, very small bio. He's a master combat tactician, and that's about it. Okay. Uh, we can see that we can build, assemble, Constri, Constriga, I don't know those languages, I apologise to anyone who does speak those languages, and how badly I've mangled it. So we're clearly looking at what is supposed to be superior on there, he's part two, as we've seen mentioned several times on this card already, and here's the, uh, wait a minute, Dragstrip? When was Dragstrip part of Superion? Well of course he's part of this wave in a rather smart move from Hasbro in terms of making sure that they will still want to get the next wave so you can get Air Raid who is the one aerial bot missing out of these five shown here that are available at launch uh, to be able to complete our proper Superion and of course Drake Drip then goes into Menasaur who is uh, made up by the bulk of the next wave of Deluxes and of course the next wave's Voyager with the Motormaster uh, plenty of warnings and legal stuff, I'm sure, in multiple languages, so clearly they're saving money by having the one typeset for this entire packaging around the world, and this guy transforms in 11 steps, apparently. So, that'll be fun. But yeah, nice packaging, uh, a bit of the grid in the back there, a bit of the G1 reminiscence, uh, even though they did go with grey rather than actually colouring it red. But that's cool, and on the bottom, just legal stuff. But it is an authentic Transformers brand product thing, I guess. But there we go. Looks really nice on card. If you're an on-card collector, I think you'll be very happy with them. However, I'm not. I'm an opener. So let's cut this guy out of here and see what the story is. So here we are out of the packaging, and as you can see, there he is, there's his gun, there's a foot hand thingy, which would be superior, I'm sure. We have instructions, we have the collector card, which I'm fairly certain is artwork from the Transformers Legends game. Which, of course, doesn't look in entirely like the figure that we have now. But that's okay, it's still cool art. Um, nothing on the back, I understand that from wave 2 onwards. We will actually have some bio information here, making it a bit more useful in terms of the collector card, uh, especially given that the tech specs on the back are one line. Um, so yeah, a bit of a strange missed opportunity here, um, but we hear that they are putting it right. Likewise, that they don't have a comic included, which we understood that they were going to, and apparently are going to, from Wave 2 onwards. 
So uh, for those of you who are lucky enough to get him as a repack or subsequent versions of him, uh, he may come with a more accurate card, maybe one which displays the card art on there and has a bio on the back and includes a comic book. This version doesn't, but that's okay because it's got the toy. And here we are with the card itself, free of the bubble, and you can see that artwork just looks great. But we need to leave that to one side and focus on the figure. So here he is, fresh out of the packet, and he looks pretty cool. There's not a huge amount of paintwork on them. Um, got the reds there. Faces coloured in some nice shiny blacks on uh, what would otherwise be grey parts, but there is a lot moulded in colour itself. Um, got some nice gold missiles in there. So that looks pretty cool. Uh, articulation wise, good movement at the arm, the elbow, uh, nothing at the hand, hips, and waist. Uh, bit of a thigh cut there, and the knee, no foot, uh, and the head it is on the ball joint, so that's nice. Pretty cool. Looking at the weapon which comes with Skydive, we have this nice double cannon here which is his primary weapon. It's very nice, it's got the barrels nicely indented there which is a good touch. Um, and it fits very nicely in his hand, very secure, not wobbling about or anything like that. So it's good that he's got a, a decent handgun. He also comes with this sort of missile poddy type thing. Um, you can tell from that that it's actually going to be the basis for the Gestalt foot. Um, and it does actually serve double duty because you can transform it into the hand as well. Uh, but you can also use it as an additional hand weapon. Um, you can see it's got sort of rocket pods or possibly beam cannons or something like that. Um, and of course a post right there, which can also fit into his hand, and he holds it really well. I don't know how great it really looks in his hand. Um, it just doesn't scream weapon. I think it's kind of let down by the fact that you can clearly see the the fingers inside there. It doesn't look particularly fantastic, but um, you know, it's nice to know that you can't hold everything at once, make him a little bit self contained. But uh, yeah, my preference is definitely the regular cannon. Okay, so the thing which makes Transformers Transformers, of course, is the fact that they transform. So here we go with Skydive's transformation. So number one, you want to take off the gun. And turn him around. Put down the nose cone there. Turn the head around. This will prevent visible face syndrome. It will not prevent visible head syndrome. But we can't see his face at least. Uh, and you raise up that nose cone there. And it snaps in place there. So as I say, you can still see his head. But um, the face is nicely obscured, at least. Okay, now comes the tricky bit with the legs. So, open up the back of the legs. And here we need to fold them down on these joints here. I uh, don't recommend that you snap these two bits together here. And you see they've got nice pegs. Get it nice and tight in there. Uh, what we need to do is go get these so they're sort of bent in on themselves. So you get that in like that. Bing. And that goes into place there. Like that. And you can now bring down the little fins at the back there. So now we can bring these arms down a little bit. But what we do need to do is to move these back. So they just need to unhinge there. And they go back themselves. Like that. And you 
you can see that this now brings this little section here in line with this tab here. So you can connect the arm on a bit more securely. And the jet wing is now in place. And the same on the other side. This is a pretty tight little section I find. But, um, it's done just like that. And there you go. Transformation complete. Now it's a pretty cool jet mode. Again, it takes a lot of inspiration from the G1 version, which was F-16 Falcon. This is not an F-16, but it has a lot of those same cues. Um, you can see the little cockpit and nose area, very similar. It doesn't have the intake underneath the cockpit area like an F-16. Instead, you've got the two intakes, which are, of course, the shoulders repurposed underneath the wings there. But very F-16 sort of wings. And they've got all this split tail, a bit like an F-18, uh, around the F-16 singular there. Probably to avoid having to license the F-16 itself. But uh, it looks very good. It certainly passes the squint test for um, being like the G1 in terms of its major colours and positions. And, you yeah, know, pretty cool jet, I think. Now, there aren't any landing gear or anything like that. Um, so generally when he's on the ground, he is just on the ground like that, but it's okay, you're probably not going to be rolling around on the ground too much. Uh, now you do see that he does have this port on the back here, now the instructions don't say anything about utilising it, but of course you can plug in his double barreled blaster right here, if you want to have a super attack jet mode, which looks okay in terms of ridiculous vehicles with giant guns on the back. Uh, or you can take this additional part here, which is of course on the Superion's limbs, um, and it is in a sort of rocket fiery sort of mode, sort of thing, and you've got that there, which will also plug into that port. So if you want to have a big sort of missile pod, uh, or if you want to say that it's a gun, it's a gun, then that's cool, and that can go on top there as well. So it's, it's interesting that it can do that, but it's not mentioned in the instructions. Um, but you know, you don't need it. Why they necessarily chose to have it in there, not entirely sure. But uh, it's there if you want to. So of course, being Combiner Wars, part of the whole point of this is that he can combine with other figures. Uh, primarily with the other aerial bots to form superior, of course. But because this is a sort of scramble city type thing, they're all interchangeable with any of the other Combiner Wars Deluxes, so you can do mix and match as you see fit. Um, now, I don't have the ability to be able to do Superion yet, because as I say, we're missing Air Raid, he's in a wave 2, he's only wave 1, and having it picked up Silver Bolt. So we'll just take a look at what he looks like in his limb mode. <laughs> So the instructions do give you the option of doing either the leg, which is traditionally where Skydive has been, or the arm mode. Now let's go with the leg one first. So you take him in jet mode to start with, pop up the wings, and do the untab of the jet nose cone, which um, is a little bit trickier because he's got that close there. I'm actually going to cheat a little bit then. Bring that down, bring that up there. And go back to that. Yep. That's the way we're supposed to go to. So plug those back into there. Uh, and up in front of the legs. If you have to do the rotate of that assembly there. Head. Bingo, up comes the Gestalt connector. We can now put that leg covering back here. This becomes a little bit problematic though. Uh, bring that back up. Get those legs together. And we're supposed to put 
that up too. It's supposed to look like that. And then we um, plug this big gun thing here into the hole on the bottom there. And it's supposed to look like that. Apparently. So there he is. Superior on lake mode. You can have him that way. Or that way. You can get the arm to stay in there. Which I did not. Uh, so yeah. That's that's leg mode. I'm sure it'll look a lot more impressive when it's actually a leg. And a super giant robot. Rather than just on its own. So as with the Scramble City G1 combiners, these new combiner horse boxes can form either limb, leg or arm for their gestalt. So here is Skydive's arm mode. First of all you rotate the head back uh, with the chest piece out to get that same connector out that you have at an angle this time. Uh, you then take the arm and move that down rotate it so it goes backwards here. Now what we will do is then rotate the entire arm assembly up, move the arm down, rotate that around, so again that slot there sticks into that peg there and again goes in nice and tight. Likewise on the other side, rotating around, moving up, and rotating Itself out, connecting the peg in. Now we basically just clip those legs together, and that is most of the arm mode. Now, the additional bit that we need is the foot gestalt piece, which also transforms, interestingly enough, into a hand. So, you just need to be able to flip out these main fingers here, flip around that, back piece, and then up and down with the now thumb, previously the heel spur. So you can see that this does move to either side, so if you want it to be the left arm or the right arm, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and of course it's got a plug on the end there, which goes nicely into the hole down there, just as it did in leg mode, and we now it's an arm. So there you have that, and you can plug in his regular gun into the little port that is in the middle of the fist there. So if you want him to hold Skydive's regular cannon there, he can. So yeah, that seems a, a little bit on the gangly side to me. Um, I would have thought that we'd move this back up here a little bit, make it a little bit shorter, but uh, you do retain full motion there because of the fact that you do have the whole waist and hip articulations to to move your arm as much as you want to. But for me, Skydive really is a leg rather than an arm. So final thoughts on this figure. Definitely a pickup. It was a solid alt mode and an excellently articulated main robot form. I think that there's no reason that you shouldn't pick up Skydive, especially if you're an Aerobot fan, or just a fan of good generations figures. Combiner Wars plays heavily on the nostalgia factor, but they're delivering solid toys which really epitomise 21st century Transformers and what can be achieved with them. This is a welcome return to form after the very disappointing Transformers Age of Extinction line, and I'm very excited to see what more we get out of Combiner Wars as we move forward with them especially seeing a completed Superion. So there we have Transformers Combiner Wars Skydive. Excellent toy, well worth picking up. What are your thoughts? Do you like Combiner Wars? Do you like the Generation 1 inspired Transformers? Or do you prefer more animated or movie based lines? Let us know in the comments below, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time with more toys on OSD.